Welcome to Life Beyond the Chariot, a faith and family series from the St. Philip Institute. We believe we are called to not only know, but also to live the truth of the gospel within our homes, in our workplaces, and beyond. We believe we are invited to encounter Christ in the messiness of day-to-day life and to live as his disciples. Welcome, everybody, to our first Life Beyond the Chariot 2021. Um, We're going to talk about this year and what it has in store for us. But before we get started, my name is Mickey Siba. I am the Catechetical Specialist here at the Institute and my dear friend and co-host. I'm Deanna Johnston, the Director of Family Life for the Institute. Happy New Year. Happy Mickey. New Year. Yes. <laughs> Season I know. two. It's funny. This this um, The idea for this episode actually came from uh, a fellow listener and priest. And um, when we asked for ideas, he's like, what if 2021 is not better than 2020? Because I know a lot of people were like, cannot wait for 2020 to end exactly (laughs) and maybe expecting that 2021 is definitely gonna be better but what if it isn't right and the day that we're recording this is the day after some excitement at the capitol yep so yeah Yeah. we made it six days (laughs) (laughs) right um so before we kind of just dive into our topic for today deanna could you lead us in prayer sure sure i really like this verse from um jeremiah Uh, chapter 29. Sorry, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For I know well the plans I have in mind for you, says the Lord. Plans for your welfare, says the Lord, not for woe. Plans to give you a future full of hope. When you call to me, when you go to pray to me, I will listen to you. When you look for me, you will find me. Yes, when you seek me with all your heart, you will find me with you, says the Lord. Good and gracious God, we thank you for the gift of our faith. We thank you for the gift of a new year. And we entrust ourselves to you. We surrender our worries, um, the uncertainties of the future, and we trust you in all things. Uh, Please bless our conversation and allow us to see the gifts that you are giving us in this new year. We ask these things in your name. Amen. Amen. Father and Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, I don't know about you, but um, I always get excited at New Year's because I love the idea of resolutions. Yes. Although I'm terrible at them. I mean, I do pretty good for like the first week or two or three, <laughs> but usually I never make it past the end of January right. with most of them. Um, I'm what they call or what I deem myself as a ca- classic fizzler. So go strong at the beginning and then it just fizzles out and I go flat. Right. Uh, but... I am excited yeah. for my resolutions this year. So do you do you do resolutions? Yeah, or? I like the idea of there being kind of a reset point, but I think I'm a similar in that like depending on what's going on at home, life happens and then you kind of fizzle out, but then the church is so good and then we start Lent. It's like, okay, fresh start in Lent. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I but I really do enjoy just like taking some time at the beginning of the new year. Um, to just think about like, what is this going to look like (laughs) or what would, what would I like to see happen in the new year? Yeah. Uh, I'm the same way. I decided this year to actually go with a goal setting planner. Um, in the past I've always done like Catholic planners, which is really great. But this year I decided I'm going to just do a goal thing. And so it just really walked you through like personal goals, professional goals, health goals. Uh, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. So I set a few out for myself, turned them into resolutions. Um, but I'm going to put you on the spot first. What are some of your some sort of, of top, top resolutions yeah, for 2021? I try to break it down into like spiritual goals, um, spiritual, physical. Um, I have had four babies in five years, so it's like time to (laughs) get physically back where I know I need to be. And I know I just feel better that way. Um, Like making a real commitment to prayer and um, being serious about that and trying not to fizzle out. Um, And then looking at uh, my marriage and family life and like how am I making marriage a priority, like really trying to make sure we have date nights and get creative and it's not just like Netflix and snacks, um, <laughs> but like real quality time together. Um, but I think being more intentional, I think that's kind of like the overall theme yeah. of, of all of my resolutions is just intentionality. No, that's great. I think that is the driving word behind mine as well. I really try to put thought into what I wanted to do. And I think I tend to um, 
take more commitments than I can actually fulfill. And it's like when I tried to run a marathon or train for a marathon before I even did like a couch to 5K. Right. <laughs> and then I was like, my body couldn't take it. And um, I do the same thing with New Year's resolutions. Yeah. I tend to cram too much in there. And then by January, I'm like, I can't do it all. And then I'm like, whatever, I'm done with this year. We'll wait till tw- <laughs> the next year for me to do no- other resolutions, which I know is silly, but I'm the same way. I really try to walk myself through these goals. Mm-hmm. Like what are, and I have a lot, but I do think a lot of it is intentionally restructuring my day. Yeah. Reprioritizing. So I guess my biggest ones are scripture reading every day. So I'm doing the Bible in a year with oh, Father yeah. Mike Schmidt. So I'm really excited about that. Seven days in. Nice. I feel like I should pat myself on the back. Like you sh- seven I will days. pat you on the back. Good job. <laughs> and I think we and, should put a link in the show notes to that podcast because... That's it's amazing. Yeah, Check it's it out. really good. And I've always I've always started, I think three times I have started Bible in a year things and again never finished it. So I'm really excited about that. And uh and then working out, you know, trying to just get healthy and I've I've done it every day, but I am sore. So if you see me <laughs> shifting around, I am my body hurts. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a little sore on that. Uh, and just drinking more water, just again, trying to be physically healthy so I can be present with my children more, yeah. be active with them more. And one of the things I really want to do with my children is one-on-one time mm. uh, with each of them, really learning, nice. like having special time for each one. I only have three, so it makes it somewhat easier, I think, than than parents who have more than that. But just to have – just a have conversations with them without the others interrupting. So those are, I would say some of my biggest ones. That's awesome. Do you do the word of the year? I do. Yeah. We've been doing that for about three, maybe three years now. Um, We write our saint for the year and our word for the year. So do you want to share yours? You want me to? You can go first. Okay. So my word of the year is look. Mine is C. That is so so (laughs) (laughs) So It's funny because I'm I'm the type that like no I'm gonna click it one time and that's it yeah. that's the one that I get my kids they're like mm, don't like that one that's click what again. I do <laughs> the first word I got was elegance and I was like no Wait, can you tell the story <laughs> I was standing in my kitchen eating some like potato chips in my sweatpants and I got elegance and I'm like no not gonna happen not not gonna happen I got C twice so I was like okay God's calling me to that but yeah that the we'll put a, a link to that as well um, Jen Fulweiler's word of the year and then she also has the saint name gen- generator for the year and mine was saint bonaventure who was the patron saint of tummy issues um so stomach illnesses and we started off the year with three of our kids getting a stomach bug oh, so i was like thank you nice to meet you saint bonaventure <laughs> so but yeah i highly encourage that but who is your yeah. saint of the year mine is saint margaret mary alacoque nice yeah and what's interesting nice. about that is uh I guess it was back in November, I was going through some books that I wanted, and I just sent a link to my mom of some books I wanted for Christmas, and one of them was about promises of the Sacred Heart, mm-hmm. devotion to the Sacred Heart, and there's a lot from St. Margaret Mary yes. um, in there, and St. Margaret Mary or St. Mary Margaret? Oh, man, I'm drawing a blank <laughs> okay. now. Anyways, okay. so I apologize in advance. I know it's one of those. Uh but I'm only on day seven, so I have a, I have a while you have time to, to get to know her and learn her name. <laughs> so I am okay. excited about that. And I even think what's fascinating about my word, which we'll talk about a little bit later in the episode, is how clearly God made it evident to me that that is my word for the year. So I know we've been talking about resolutions and yeah. sort of how we do on them, but and I know we've had we have had episodes about 2020 and how hard it was and challenges that it brought, but also beauty that it brought. And I know that it has been a common thing of people saying like, oh, I "Just can't wait for 2020 to be over." And when we say that, I think we say that with an expectation that 2021 is going to be not just a little bit better, but significantly better. Right. But what if it's not? Yeah. What if it's not? Right. What if? It either stays sort of where we have been and mm-hmm. sort of this the state of like frustration or confusion or restrictions and loss and pain and grief, uh, chaos, 
So what what do we do? Right. What do we do with that? Yeah. And I hope that this episode can en- can offer some hope. Yeah, and just some encouragement for those who may feel anxious about the year ahead. Because like we said, we're, we're seven days in and hot mess has, has erupted <laughs> already. already. And yeah. I, and who knows what's, what's to, to come. And it can be very easy to just get stuck in that mindset of like I we we have no control over the situation or to just worry about a lot of things and it's not to downplay like the reality of anxiety and um and the various worries that that different people have um but there is a certain amount of like learning to surrender mm-hmm. and knowing that um I know one thing that God's really put on my heart at the beginning of the year um cuz I've just I've been thinking about a whole bunch of different things and and life changes and um, I was kind of like rambling off to God, like all of these things I was worried about. And he's like, but am I still God at the end of all that? Like, am I still God? And like, oh, well, yes. <laughs> and so like having that in mind as I'm worried or, or giving things over to the Lord, it's like, well, at the end of the day, is God still God? Yeah. Okay. Then it's going to be okay. It may still be uncomfortable and it's not to downplay the reality of people suffering and the uncertainties ahead, but there is something, if we are Christian, if we believe what we say, we believe that then when we say God is God, like that, that does mean something and it does make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. And I had done a a talk on hope years and years ago, and there was this story of this cardinal Vietnamese Cardinal, Cardinal Francis Xavier Nguyen Van Thuyen. He was imprisoned for 13 years. And I had remembered that there was a very powerful quote. And I'm mm. like, but I don't remember exactly what it was. So I went back and did some, looked at my notes. And I just want to read this just because I thought it was beautiful. So again, he was imprisoned. And he said, all prisoners, including myself, constantly wait to be let go. I decided then and there that my captivity would not be merely a time of resignation, but a turning point in Mm. my life. Mm. I decided I would not wait. I would live the present moment and fill it with love. For if I wait, the things I wait for will never happen. The only thing that I can be sure of is that I am going to die. No, I will not spend time waiting. I will live the present moment and fill it with love. A straight line consists of millions of little points. Likewise, a lifetime consists of millions of seconds and minutes joined together. In every single point along the line, oh, if every single point along the line is rightly set, the line will be straight. Mm. If every minute of a life is good, that life will be holy. Mm. And I loved, I just love the perspective that that offered that I think, at least for me, and I don't know what it was for you, but this idea of like, okay, we just have to sort of grin and bear this struggle of 2020. Mm-hmm. 2021, it'll be, it'll be over. It'll be it's better. It's a very like American mindset, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Like, it'll get better. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, it'll get, yeah. It'll get better. Let me just get through this struggle and then everything will go back to... Maybe what you said, like our life of of comfort, and I know people Mm -hmm. have struggled with hardships, and I'm not saying that everyone's lives was super comfortable before COVID, but it shook, it shook everybody up. Mm -hmm. Um, And along with just the regular struggles of daily life, then having the pandemic and everything that came Mm -hmm. with that, that we were shaken from our life of either stability or normalcy, Mm -hmm. right? That even... Mm -hmm. Uh, there's comfort that we find just in the predictability yeah. a little bit of yeah. our lives. And the fact that maybe we were just waiting, like I'm just going to wait for this to end and then things will get back to maybe what they were, at least mm-hmm. close to it. And um, what this cardinal said is he said, I'm not going to wait. He said, this time right now, um, is not a time of res- resignation, but a turning point in mm. my life. And I just encourage, and this is me speaking to myself um, as well as our listeners, but I encourage you to to think like this will be a turning point in my life because God wants it to be. Mm-hmm. And But with that, it does take some effort and work to look at what he's trying to be 
what he has been trying to teach us, what he's been trying to offer us in this time. Absolutely. So uh, kind of another story that goes along with this that ties into my word for the year, which was look, is I'd ask my mom for another book. Um, I really just like the cover. I'm like, oh, that's it's a really pretty, pretty cover. It's pretty. So I was like, hey, mom, can you get that for me? And she did. She got me all the books I wanted, which was only three. But uh, but it was, I forget exactly what the title is, um, but I'm only, you know, one chapter in. But it told this story about that there is this woman who was just frustrated and worn out by everyday life and had all of these worries and anxieties. And she would lament to her husband um, every day about how hard things had been, how much she had been struggling, all of her challenges. And he said, I'm going to get her some some flowers, a bouquet of flowers. Mm. So he goes to the store, gets her this bouquet, sets it on the table. She comes home from work, and she's just focused on, you know, dinner or doing, uh, getting things ready for kids the next day. And she walks by this table multiple times and never notices this bouquet of flowers. And that's where the author stopped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and And she said, what if God is like that with us? Mm. That he is giving us these bouquets, like he's setting these bouquets in front of us. And in my book, it said, we need to stop. We need to look. Mm-hmm. And that's why, that was my word of the year. I'm like, okay, God, I got, <laughs> got your it. message. Got I need message. to look. Oh, man. And I think that that's one of the lessons that we can all learn is that with with this past year, like 2020, I do think it has made all of us stop. Mm-hmm. Uh, most of us were made to stop mm-hmm. our things that we were just accustomed to. And maybe some of us reacted well to it. I did not. Uh, you know, And we've talked about all those in past yeah. episodes, so I don't want to rehash it. But it made me stop. Mm-hmm. And then I had to figure out, and I didn't consult God enough. Like, how do we, how do I get through this? What mm-hmm. are, you know, and but I think it made us stop. And now I feel like going into 2021 that God's just like, just look now, you have stopped. I have tried my best to like give him more control, although I didn't even know I had control issues until this year. Same. <laughs> and, but now he's like, look, I want you to look. I'm there. I'm here. Mm. Always look for my bouquets. Mm. And so that is something that I encourage our listeners to do. Like, what are those bouquets that yeah. God is sending us? Yeah. But it does, we have to be intentional. We right. have to be looking for, for it. And open, because mm-hmm. if we're not open to seeing the gifts that God wants to give us, then it is going to be, I think it is very easy to just have those blinders on and just be like, well, I'm just looking at the situation right now and I don't like this situation. And who knows what's going to happen next. But in the meantime, like God's hand is just is moving and, and shaking and um, like be- really beautiful things are happening. I know for me, looking at the, the last year, um, it was hectic, like being at home with four kids and, and trying to work and trying to do homeschooling. Um, my husband trying to teach from home, like it was chaotic for a season, but there were also these, oh, just such beautiful moments of family time that normally we wouldn't have had. And mm-hmm. I mean, it was a lot of family time. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of togetherness, but it was a gift. And I, and I hope that, uh, that our kids really received that, that gift, but like being able to see the gifts that God lays in front of us, but it means having eyes that are open mm-hmm. and, and being willing to look at the father and, and um, and to just trust him. And I think, I can't remember the name of the book either, but it's by Emily Wilson. Um, and it does have a beautiful cover. So we'll put the, the name of that yes. in the, the show oh, notes. I think this is like Awaken. Awaken the Heart. Something, something like, like that. that. It's, it's a 52 week. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Emily. Walk through. I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I really like it. So, yes. Yeah. Um, but that's something that I noticed too, that I was focusing a lot on the negatives of my mm-hmm. life. And I'm like, I need to really... Um, Focus on those things that I'm, I'm grateful for. It's yeah. really hard to be negative when yeah. you're focusing on your blessings. It's amazing what grat- like this, having a spirit of gratitude, how that really does change everything. That can really just change a, a total mindset. So, mm-hmm. yeah. 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 Digging into that this year. Yeah. So, um, I guess 
I guess 2021 is going to be what we make of it. Mm -hmm. And there are many things that are going to be outside of our control. Mm -hmm. But there are a tremendous amount of things that God has placed within our care Mm -hmm. that he wants us to do something with it. Mm -hmm. Um, Our time, um, our children, um, if we work, uh, our career, um, our families, our spouses, Mm -hmm. uh, that this should not be a year of like, I'm not going to waste time. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and I think, again, the gift of 2020 is that it revealed to me a lot of areas of weakness. Mm. A lot of things where my priorities were out of, were out of whack. Yeah. And I didn't even know how much it was affecting, mm-hmm. how much they were out of whack until it just like was hit me in yeah. the face. And, yeah. and I think at least... The gift of this year, well, I don't know, is I hope, I hope, but we're not going to have like too many more surprises. Although I don't, I have no idea. Just buckle in, folks. But <laughs> we already know, I mean, many of us already know what it's like to lose our job. Yeah. Um, to not be able to see sick family members who are in nursing homes or the mm-hmm. hospitals. Um, people who have had to readjust to their work schedule. Um, kids, I mean, our poor children who have had to learn how to go out in mass and learn from the computer and then learn in person and then have to go back to learning from the computer. Right. And that I think hopefully now we've been shaken from the a life of, by comfort, I mean, just what we think like, okay, this is just my, my daily routine. And we've mm-hmm. been shaken of that. And hopefully it gave us perspective of, okay, well, what do I need to work on? And I think 2020 right. really revealed a lot of that to oh, me. Oh, for sure, for sure. And I, I think that we're... I think one of the gifts that is coming out of, you know, this, this era that we're in is that it's a reminder that we are called to become saints and Mm. that is not going to be like spa treatment to, to journey down that road. And I mean, I'm sure many people are familiar with the quote from um, Pope Benedict. Um, You, the world offers you comfort, but you were not made for comfort. You were made for greatness. And I think what, what recent events have have taught us is that we're we are called to come out of our comfort zone and god is going to call us to do hard things Mm -hmm. and i mean by virtue of our baptism like we're but we're equipped to to do that and we have the sacraments and and praise god right now we can we can still go to mass and we can still receive the eucharist and those are the tools that that we can really use going into to the new year and really leaning on that like the grace of the sacraments are the, are a real thing. <laughs> it's it's a reality, um, but to to just recognize that yes, these are difficult and uncertain times, but we have faith that God is with us in it. And yes, there will be suffering, mm-hmm. um, but there is always resurrection. And yeah, we, we may we may not know the details of what's to come, um, but God is is with us in that. And also that it's okay to. To be sad, it's okay yeah. to, um, yeah, it's okay to 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 not be certain of of what's ahead, um, and yeah, I know you had you had talked about Saint Thomas Aquinas and some of his remedies for <laughs> yeah <laughs> for sadness. Yeah, and I think too, because when we think about we we don't know what's to come, mm-hmm. and it could very well get much worse. I mean, I have no idea, like worldly speaking. But it does. the The beauty is, that it does not have to get worse with our soul. Mm. Like Oof, yeah. it can. I love yeah. that song. It is well with my soul. Mm. I love that song. Mm. Like, um, that is what this year can be. So even if by all worldly standards, it gets worse or it doesn't get mm-hmm. better for us, and there is just sadness every like yes. around us and chaos around us. Right. That. It can still be well with my soul Amen. Yes. Um, and prioritizing that relationship with God. But that doesn't mean that just because we do that, we're just going to be happy and joyful and bubbly um, for all of 2021. Right. And so I love that St. Thomas Aquinas actually had these remedies for sadness. So we're going to quickly go through these five remedies. First one's one of my favorite. The first and the last are some of my favorite. The first remedy is to grant ourselves something that we like. Yes. So it's okay if you want that Snickers bar or a glass of wine, <laughs> uh, ice cream. I don't know. You name it. Just make sure it's not a sinful thing. Right. In moderation. <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> uh, but it's okay to grant ourselves something yeah. 
Treat yourself. There treat you go. Yourself, yeah. I'm sure. So. Yeah. <laughs> treat yourself. Thomas Aquinas. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. The second remedy, which I actually do a lot of. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> for kindred spirits in that way. <laughs> is weeping yeah having a good cry absolutely like a good ugly cry yeah like just oh i'm such an ugly crier like <laughs> swollen face like just get it out right yes i have to not go around people have like two hours after i cry because they're gonna be like whoa <laughs> what happened exactly uh but St. Thomas the cry he did say um a hurtful thing hurts yet more if we keep it shut up mm. mm-hmm. because the soul is more intent on it Whereas if it be allowed to escape, the soul's intention is dispersed, as it were, on outward things Oof. so that the inward sorrow is lessened. Mm-hmm. So have that good cry. Yeah. It's all right. Yeah. It's good. And this third one, I think Deanna and I do a lot together. Yes. <laughs> uh, which is why I'm so grateful for her friendship in my life. Um, but the third remedy is sharing our sorrow with a friend. Mm-hmm. And knowing that, I think one of the biggest things with this COVID thing is the whole idea of uh, feeling isolated. Yeah, and lack of community. Yeah. yeah. And to not let that, that it is okay and at, and actually very good for us to share our sorrow mm-hmm. um, with a friend. We don't have to share our sorrow with all of Facebook or Instagram <laughs> or social media. <laughs> I have found that that really doesn't it doesn't um, really play out. Play out really well. <laughs> Yeah. But a true friend who knows our heart, uh, but will also point us to those things that are holy right. and can help us walk in our way of holiness. Exactly. Uh, the fourth remedy is um, is to contemplate the truth. And one of, I mean, one of the best ways for me to do that is absolutely to read scripture. Mm-hmm. Um, if you haven't cracked open that Bible in a while, let this be your year. Uh, open yourselves up to the truth of God's word. Um, but uh, you can also do this through like nature, mm. right? It, uh, looking at the beauty of God in nature, um, in music, in art. Um, so if that's something that you don't really dive into is what are those things that are good, beautiful, and true? Mm. Mm-hmm. And let that be a remedy mm-hmm. for sadness. And Deanna, do you want to say the sure. fifth one? The fifth one is a warm bath and a nap. And we're not kidding. He really <laughs> does say. I really love that. Bathing and sleeping. <laughs> I really like that. It's like, go sleep it off. Like, yeah. <laughs> take a warm bath and a nap. Like, don't, yeah, don't underestimate the power of a good sleep. Yeah. Mm. And, and one of the things, um, and I forget two of these words, and I, I had written it down. Well, I wrote down the little... Um, Letters that represent each word, but I forgot some of them. But my mm-hmm. husband uses this thing called HALT, H-A-L-T. Mm-hmm. I forget what all of them stand oh, for. Are but you hungry? Are you hungry? Uh-huh. So if you are, get something to eat. Yeah. Get you a little snack. <laughs> I forgot the A and the L, but the T is tired, right? <laughs> Do you know what the A and the L is? You put me on the I'm spot. I'm trying to think. <laughs> um, my husband, I love you. And I'm so sorry. I forgot. Uh but mostly it's because I'm usually hungry or tired. So right. Those are, those are my <laughs> default problems. Am I hungry? Am I tired? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so it's okay to do that. Take a bath. Take a yes. shower. Get some sleep. Get some food. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of yourself. Absolutely. Take care of yourself. No, but it'll be a, a wonderful, it'll be a good year. It'll be mm-hmm. a good year. And I know that there's a there's a lot of distraction. And I think that's another piece to all of this is to really think about like, okay, if I'm going to look, if I'm going to see all of the gifts that God wants to give me this year, if I want to have a spirit of gratitude, what is the noise that I need to get out of mm-hmm. my life this year? And if you don't do anything else, I mean, I mean it's great to have like a list of resolutions. And, and I was actually looking at my journal from last year. This time last year, I was getting ready to, to have baby number four. Um, and I had written out like, okay, here's everything I want to do in 2020. And um, it struck me that one of the things I wrote was, you know, if I if I can just grow in my faith this year, like that'll be enough. And it may I'm I am not a saint. <laughs> I am I have a lot of work to do. But did I draw a little bit closer to Jesus in in this year? 
then okay, then it's not a wasted year. Mm-hmm. God doesn't waste suffering. <laughs> God doesn't waste prayer. Like there, there's so much that God wants to offer us, but being able to have eyes to see mm-hmm. and, um, and ears to hear and to be receptive to, to all of those different gifts that God wants to give us. So, I mean, pick a saint of the year, pick a word of the year, but just look for, for how, watch God move this year. Like yeah. I, and I, and I really think that that's, that's one of the things he's inviting us to watch what he can do. And oh, it may, sure. it may not be what we're expecting. <laughs> it may not look the way that we were expecting. Um, but just watch what he can do and be open to that. And yeah, it'll be a good year. <laughs> yeah, I do. And, um, just sort of to kind of end it like last year ended, I mean, um, the loss of my dad was mm. tragic um, to ALS and uh, it wasn't something we expected. It was a very quick diagnosis. Mm-hmm. So I feel like I'm speaking from a little bit of the like, experience of something that was completely devastating. Uh, but I learned so much through that experience mm-hmm. and even the heartbreak. I mean, I still grieve and there are some days when my uh, emotions are just like something triggers me and I just start crying and sometimes it just feels surreal or, you know, uh, but God has just shown me so much of his mercy, even in the devastation. Mm. And so I hope that people, when we're talking about it's going to be a good year, I hope that they really believe that because like you said, our God is still our God. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that devastation is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, It doesn't mean that sadness Mm -hmm. won't come. But he never, ever withdraws his presence from us. Amen. Ever. Amen. And now we can choose to withdraw from the presence of God. Um, And that is devastating. Um, But he is a forgiving God. He is a loving God. And he teaches us his his unconditional love, even in the midst of the most unimaginable pain. Mm -hmm. And so... um, yeah. So, but I'm confident that if we um, stop, right, give a sacred pause, uh, look up to Jesus, and listen to His guidance, yeah. that 2021 really will be a good, um, a good year. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, speaking of good years, this is our season two. Or I guess we're calling this season two. Episode yeah, one. absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, we're we're really excited about um, just diving into other topics. I know we've kind of brainstormed about. Um, what's ahead for Life Beyond the Chariot and have some really exciting guests coming up and potential guests um, for this new year. But as always, we invite you to visit our website, stphilipinstitute.org. Um, please pray for us, pray for our team. Um, and if you feel called to to support us financially, like, go for it. There's a donate button. Um, and we have, we're, we've received several emails about just questions for, for this podcast or, or for the main St. Philip Institute podcast, but please feel free to email us at podcast at stphilipinstitute.org. Let us know what types of things um, you'd like to hear about um, over the next year, and it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. And just to, I don't know if we've done this. I just want to thank our followers, like our listeners. They thank you so much. Mm. I mean, really, I feel like this is just a conversation with Deanna and I and some really cool guests sometimes um, that happen to be recorded. (laughs) You know, but the fact that you guys have been engaging with us and letting us know what you think, we are just so grateful. So thank you very much Mm -hmm. for your, uh, for your listening, for your input. And I hope that you know that you guys are in our prayers. Um, And we, we do listen. I think our first episodes that we planned out for 2021 have all come from suggestions Mm -hmm. of um, people who yeah. We just asked. So shout out to Father Guillermo for yep. the suggestion for this episode. <laughs> awesome. All right, friend. Should right. we close with prayer? Absolutely. Awesome. In the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good and gracious God, again, we thank you for the gift of our faith. We thank you for the gift of this new year. Please help us to see your goodness. Please help us to look for the gifts that you are wanting to give us in this new year. And help us to have the courage to say yes to you as you call us out of our comfort zone. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.